Hi friends, it's Miss Megan from the Bethel Branch Library. And today we're gonna do a story time all about jungle animals. Do you see any jungle animals back here? Who do you see? I see lion and elephant and crocodile and monkey. Can you make a sound like a monkey? Very good. Let's get started today with our welcome song. Sing along if you know it. We'll do it two times through. Hello, 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 and how are you? I'm fine, I'm fine, and I hope that you are too. One more time. Hello, 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 and how are you? I'm fine. I'm fine, and I hope that you are too. Let's get started with our very first book. Hold your hands out here like this, and we say, open, shut them, open, shut them. Give a little clap, clap, clap. Open, shut them, open, shut them. Put them in your lap, lap, lap. The Lion Inside by Rachel Bright. What do we see on the cover of this book? I see a mouse. What else do you see? A big lion? Let's see what this book is about. The Lion Inside. Take a look at that little tiny mouse. He's reading a book called How to Roar. Hmm. The Lion Inside by Rachel Bright. In a dry, dusty place where the sand sparkled gold stood a mighty flat rock, all craggy and old. And under that rock, in a tiny little house, lived the littlest, quietest, meekest brown mouse. There he is. He was so very tiny, so incredibly small, that nobody noticed him, ever at all. Do you see him down here in the grass? He says, hello. Do you think they hear him? He got stepped on and sat on and missed out on stuff, ignored and forgotten. His mouse life was tough. Meanwhile, far above, on top of the rock, times were quite different. It was lion o'clock. This huge, toothy creature made sure everyone saw how important he was by how loud he could roar. Whoa, that is a big roar. Can you make a big roar? Let's hear your biggest roar. Oh my. He was head of the pack. He was shouty and proud. He loved flexing his biceps and wowing the crowd. Yes, all were impressed by this mighty king cat. If only, thought Mouse, I could be more like that. How do you think Mouse feels? He said he was ignored and that he missed out on stuff. How would that make you feel if you missed out on stuff? Pretty sad, huh? Then, late one dark night, in his tiny mouse bed, the cleverest thought popped into his head. He leapt up in the darkness and held up a paw. I've got it, he said. 
What I need is a roar. So little mouse wants to learn how to roar. I mean, if this mouse with the weeniest squeak were a little more grr and a little less neat, well, he'd still be the smallest of fuzzy brown mice, but he'd make friends and join in and life would be nice. Yes, thought the mouse, I must find out how. I will learn how to roar and I will learn it now. But it wouldn't be easy. There was only one beast who could teach him this thing, but might make him a feast. Who do you think mouse means? Who could teach mouse how to roar? It was time to be strong. Take a chance, after all. Forever was such a long time to feel small. Do you ever feel small? Like no one can hear you? Let's see what little mouse does. So he made himself brave and he thought like a winner. He set off for the top, hoping not to be dinner. It felt like the scariest thing he could do. But if you want things to change, you first have to change you. The farther he climbed, the closer he got to the slumbering lion reclining on top. Then at last, as he stood on his tippy toes, he found himself suddenly nose to nose. <gasps> Look how big that lion is. I think lion and mouse are like opposites. Big and small. Let's see if we can find any more opposites between them. Ahem, gulp, pardon me. Wake up, Mr. Lion. You've got company. A squeak, Mr. Lion. What I've come to you for is squeak. Do you think you could teach me to roar? A silence befell that twinkling plane. Lion opened his eyes and puffed out his mane. Time went so slowly, it felt like a week. Then he opened his mouth and he let out an eek! What happened? What do you think Lion is feeling right now? That's right, I think he's scared. He's scared of the little mouse. That's another opposite. Little mouse is brave and Lion is scared. The lion curled up in a terrified ball. He didn't like this. Not one bit at all. Don't hurt me, he whimpered. Oh, try to be nice. Well, this mighty great lion was frightened of mice. Don't worry, Mouse peeped. I'm here as a friend. Let's hang out together, be pals to the end. That was a magical moment for sure, when the mouse didn't feel at all small anymore. He had found his true voice and learned to speak out. And for that, you don't need to roar or to shout. And from that day and always, the two were a pair. They both liked that rock better, now that rock was to share. The mouse was still little, felt big in his head. And lion, he still roared, but with laughter instead. Yes, that day they both learned that no matter your size, we all have a mouse and a lion inside. The end. That was The Lion Inside by Rachel Bright. I hope you enjoyed that book and had a good time practicing your roars. Coming up next is a flannel board about five little monkeys. Five little monkeys jumping on the bed. Let's take a minute and look at all of our monkeys. Don't they look silly? What are some of the things that these monkeys are doing? They're all jumping on the bed, but look at this one right here. He's got toothpaste and a toothbrush. What do you think he was doing? 
If you look really, really close, you might notice something. All of these monkeys have long tails, but each of their tails are making numbers. Here's the number one, the number two, the number three, the number four, and the number five. Are you ready to start our flannel board today? Here we go. Five little monkeys jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. How many monkeys do we have on the bed now? Let's count them. One, two, three, four. Four little monkeys jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. How many monkeys do we have left? One, two, three. Three little monkeys jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. How many monkeys do we have left? One, two. Two little monkeys jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. What's left? One little monkey. One little monkey jumping on the bed. He fell off and bumped his head. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. How many monkeys do we have left? Zero. We don't have any monkeys left on the bed. Zero monkeys jumping on the bed. None fell off and bumped their heads. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, put those monkeys back into bed. One, two, three, four, five. Those are some very silly monkeys. Up next is a book. Those silly monkeys jumping on the bed. What kinds of things do you do before you go to bed? Hmm, I brush my teeth. I brush my hair. And I also read a book. Next up, we've got another book. Hold your hands out here like this and we say, open, shut them, open, shut them. Give a little clap, clap, clap. Open, shut them, open, shut them. Put them in your lap, lap, lap. Our next book is called Hug. What do you see on the cover? A monkey? How does that monkey look? Hmm, happy, yeah. It looks like he wants something though. What do you think he wants with his arms up like that? Maybe he wants a hug? Let's see what happens in our book. There he is. Hug.
hug? What kind of animal do you see here? Elephants, right, what are they doing? Oh, they're hugging, aww. Hug, hug, oh no. We see the lizards hugging and the snakes. Hmm, but the little monkey looks worried. Why do you think he's so worried? Oh, now take a look. How does little monkey look now? His eyes are down and he's wearing a frown. Do you think maybe he's sad? Hmm. Hug. like the elephants are taking him somewhere. I wonder where he's going. Hug. What kind of animals are these? Lions, you're right, and they go roar. And giraffes, they hug. Hug. Hippos. Hug. Oh no. Bobo looks so sad. What do you think Bobo wants? Hug. Hug, 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 hug. Sometimes all you need is a hug. Hug. Who's Bobo hugging now? The elephants. Hug. A uh, big group hug. Mommy, Bobo, such a good story. The end. That was Hug. I hope you enjoyed Hug. Next up, we're gonna play a little game that involves using some animal sounds. So I'm gonna need your help to make all the sounds. Here we go. I went to the jungle one day, jungle one day, jungle one day, and I saw an alligator on the way, and he said, hmm, what does the alligator say? Snap, snap. He said, snap, snap. Can you do snap, snap? Sometimes you can do it with your hand like this, go snap, 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 snap. Good job. Let's see what our next animal is. I went to the jungle one day, jungle one day, jungle one day, and I saw a monkey on the way. And he said, what does the monkey say? <laughs> That's right. He said, <laughs> Let's see what's next. I went to the jungle one day, jungle one day, jungle one day. I went to the jungle one day and saw an elephant. What does the elephant say? Oh, cute elephant. 
Isn't it so cute? Can you make the elephant sound? Sometimes you can hold your hand out this and go Good job. Last one. He's known as the king of the jungle, but actually he doesn't live in the jungle at all. Would you believe that? I went to the jungle one day, jungle one day, jungle one day, and I saw a lion on the way, and he said, roar. Let's hear your best roar. Roar. Good job, friends. Way to go. Give yourselves a nice clap. Very nicely done, very nicely done. Parents, your literacy tip for today is to practice making animal sounds with your children. Believe it or not, these little sounds will help your child get ready to read. I hope you all have a wonderful day. See you soon.